The yo, it's in New York. Yo, it's in New York. Yo, it's in New York. To New York, to New York. With the yo, it's in New York. Yo, it's in New York. Yo, it's in New York. To New York, to New York. And welcome to Crash Chords Autographs. Hailing from La Mirada, California, is today's talented and humble nerdcore artist, Y.T. Cracker. In his latest release, Introducing Niels, Y.T. Cracker weaves a narrative around his character and a not-too-distant future world where web security and piracy prevention have become privatized. Hear him chat with Matt about his vision for this creative endeavor, extending from the music toward a visual medium and possible plans for a film adaptation. They also cover the importance of sacrifice in the pursuit of creating, completing, and promoting one's art, and the necessity to decompress in the interim. Even finding time to discuss a mutual love of League of Legends, here's presenting Matt Storm and YT Cracker. Hello, is this YT Cracker? It is indeed. How are you doing? Good. It's finally great to get to chat with you, buddy. Yeah, sorry. It's uh, been so uh, difficult. No, it's no problem. I mean... I'm sorry you had to go through all that bullshit and losing your card. That's the worst. I hate when that shit happens. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's part of the, the voyages, you know. Yeah. And they chop, chop it up every once in a while. Deal <laughs> with it. So um, I'm glad to have you on the show. Um, I've had a – you'll be one of many nerdcore rappers I've had on, and I've heard you – first I discovered you through a ton of other artists because you're featured just about on every record I think I've ever heard. Um, definitely a lot of the latest stuff. From um, from earlier stuff from Adam Warrock and from Shape of the Dark Lord, and so I was like, oh, let me check out what this guy's about. And then I discovered um, the Link, which might be one of my favorite songs of yours. Excellent, excellent. Because I was like, oh, the Link. I was like, oh, the Link. This must be about Zelda. I wonder if it's any good. And then my mind was blown. Excellent. That's that's good. That was that was the intended reaction I wanted. So well, that's good. Uh, mission accomplished. <laughs> So, um, obviously, you have your brand new record out, Introducing Niels, which is a concept record um, that I have also been listening to quite a bit. Where did the uh, – so, obviously, it's this huge story about corporate takeover and limiting of Internet and, you know, restriction of Internet use and all of this stuff, a future that doesn't seem super unrealistic. Where did this inspiration come from for, the, for this new record? Um, like last uh, February, so – about a year ago, I guess. I just, uh, I don't know what it was. I, I'm pretty sure drugs were involved or something. I was <laughs> just thinking about this whole story. And uh, then um, I, uh, th there's a lot of like this synthwave music that I was listening to and been kind of producing. And, and I really love the like 1980s aesthetic. And so it sort of became this, uh, I don't know where I've, uh, initially, I think that I had like the kind of just how I wanted to sound in my head, but then just more or less, it became this kind of thing. I just sort of started developing like the story, and uh, it changed. I mean, even as the album was being produced, there were certain things I needed to reconcile, like with the plot or whatnot. But um, it just sounded like a crazy idea to me, and then I was like, well, I kind of want to make it a movie too. Cause it, it works better, I think. Um, it's sort of like an audio book as it is, but, but yeah. with, by, you know, having a fucking, um, having a, uh, what do you call it? A, uh, a visual, like, representation of it, I thought was also kind of key to telling the story. But again, really, like, I could not tell you exactly where it came from. It just sort of hit me and I made it. <laughs> um, did the, did any of the songs exist before the album concept did, or did it all just kind of get born of that narrative, the, the, the music? No, it all, like, well, the, I think the first song that I did do was the Introducing Neil's, like, uh, song, and then the rest of it, yeah, like, so pretty much everything came out of this story, and so all the, when I had, I was working with Decepticon and Amplitude Problem, mm -hmm. um, on the on the music and uh, 
myself, obviously, and then Mitch Murder is on a track, and Tanner's on a track, but every track that I was just getting sent, I was trying to figure out how to place it within the narrative of the story, like what would be the best place for it, or, um, you know, what's the best lyrics to go with it. So I just had this plot skeleton sort of thing, and then filled in the blank to all the, the different music that we were making. Um, was that a harder structure to write within? Because, I mean, your other al- your other albums are more or less, I mean, they're still a through line, but it's mostly, you know, here's a nerdy thing, here's a cool thing, here's an idea. You know, they're, they're not so connected. Was it harder to write when it was such a connected narrative? Uh, not really. Like, sort of, it's more just like kind of making sure that, you know, so for instance, like with the Conaner album that I did, like the each song, um, had something to do with like that part in the game as well. Like it, it had some sort of like allegorical tie to it, like where the beat was in the game and what was going on at the time, and then like kind of what I'm talking about. So right. those things are a little easier. It's not in this piece of this this album. It wasn't necessarily like difficult to because uh, again I had an idea of the, of the story or whatever. It's just more like what tone you're evoking, like what feel, like how it fits with the pacing of the album. Because there's a ton of beats too that like we were not even using for those right. projects, so it was mainly just like something sounded like it belonged. Like, oh, okay, this would be good for the arcade. This would be good for the, you know, the betrayal, the figures or whatever. Like, that's just pretty much the only uh, thing that was whatever. But yeah, all the beats I guess were made prior to stuff getting written to them. So do you typically um, work on producing the beats first and then write lyrics, or is it kind of can go either way sometimes? Almost exclusively. Like, I mean, most of the time what will happen otherwise is, like, I'll have a song that, like, I may have started writing another beat, and then we figure out, like, it would go better with a different beat, and sometimes that happens. But very rarely do I write without having, like, some type of a, backing music is on beforehand. Cool. Awesome. And um, so you mentioned also that you're you're interested in trying to ch- turn this into a movie as well. Um, would, would your idea for the movie be more narrative driven and less about the music or would you want it to be kind of like a hip hop musical narrative? Well, actually, like, um, I mean, uh, the first 10 minutes are already, already on. Like, uh, the... The thing was, I went so like right after I finished uh, recording the album, mm-hmm. I went to uh, I was supposed to just go right into like doing this aggressive crowdfunding for a movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, what ended up happening is um, I just I kind of went into decompression mode instead because like I'd been working like solid for eight months or whatever on on the album. And sure. so instead of taking like a break, I kind of just wanted to having to take a forced break. And this is it's happening right in the middle of when I needed to be drumming up press for the for the uh, movie and stuff. So needless to say, like that kind of thing was sort of an abysmal failure. Uh, so I'm probably going to wind up having to do this like secondary push on um, the press push to get like everything more attention surrounding it. I mean, it's something I'm I'm totally willing to fund 100% myself. It's just a matter of like having eyes on it, like. Sure. You don't want a tree to fall in the forest and you don't want to hear it type thing. And gotcha. That's kind of what I'm dealing with with this. So, yeah, it, but it's, all it is is the music. Like, it's like, just think of it like a thriller or something like that. Like, it's just a, it would be an hour long music video. Like, oh, cool. So yeah. Not, so that's, yeah, the movie is not like a, a separate movie or anything like that. It's more just like following the music of the, of the movie, making it like a music video type thing. That would actually be very cool. Something like that hasn't been done in a while. And, like, I mean, Thriller, I remember the huge hit Thriller was. And that was only, like, 10 or 11 minutes. And, like, it's this big epic story in the small time based around that song. So, yeah, doing a whole hour that would be kind of just one giant music video would be pretty cool. And then you could also kind of chop it up into smaller music videos, too, if you wanted to release it, like, on YouTube in that format and stuff. Well, yeah, that's – so, like, right now, if you go to – if you go to youtube.com forward slash uh, introducing Neil, um, there's a few, uh, a couple of videos. Of, I, there's a, the final one I haven't even uploaded yet, really. Mm-hmm. But you can kind of see how it was progressing, like the initial, like, you know, and it was just the drawings and the storyboards. And sure. you know, now it's become like a whatever, but I mean, getting there. 
Cool. Awesome. Um, are you now, I know you're obviously traveling. We're chatting while you're in the airport. Are you on tour or are you just, is this aside from, from, from music related stuff? No, I just came out. I, well, initially like I come here to, I came to LA to like, Oh, I'll drum up some more support for the album and stuff. But right. I, I went up like shooting, I went up shooting something for sci-fi and like, I have to like, a couple of these screenwriters do this thing. I'm just being a stupid idiot. I do a Hollywood idiot. And then uh, <laughs> I came to San Francisco and goofing off there. Like I've really just been goofing off a lot the last few months. I have no idea what I'm doing with my life. I'm just uh, like a meteor in the in the cosmos, just waiting to run into a planet. Well, it sounds like you have some ideas of direction, and you'll get there. Um... <laughs> Do you plan on going on tour and, and touring the music as well? Do you have a, a plan oh, for that? Oh, definitely. Yeah, like, the thing is that if I tour on this album, like, I kind of got to actually have to think about it a little bit more because I'd like it to be more of a multimedia presentation, like, in the sense that it's just how it has to be presented. Um, right. You know, and then kind of think of, like, more of an abridged set to do that, like, kind of hits all the right buttons but doesn't like just too heavy handed with the bullshit and stuff but I mean I think it's I think it could be like a really well done like performance piece if it's done right and so it, sure. it would have required a lot of thinking but yeah I mean I haven't been on a proper tour in quite a while it's just been a bunch of one offs uh, which has its advantages but at the same time it's like when you're on tour you tend to get into more of a like a more of a grind, like more of a, more of a system, and it starts to like to mill that system really well. And I, I appreciate that more. I think like them just doing a show, a two shows, three shows a month. I think. Right. Gotcha. Well, that makes sense. I mean, getting into the groove of it almost makes it easier to do, you know, a couple nights a week or whatever it is. Um, yeah, it's autopilot. Yeah, pretty much. Um, when you're not writing music or on tour or, or working on introducing meals as it's now out, do you have any preferred pastime things you do that's not music related hobbies? I'm, I've been playing a lot of Eve online lately, uh, <laughs> but usually like, I just, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm just, I'm a real weird character. I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know what I want to be when I grow up or any kind of stuff. I just sort of kind of fly through space and time and work on stuff. But I mean, I always have the internet and I always have internet marketing and I always have, I can do card tricks and I can play the guitar or like, you know, there's all kinds of different things I can do. But I I'm, might try being homeless for a little while, see how that works out. I don't, I don't know. This is what it is. I just, I'm always on an adventure. <laughs> I mean, I, at least you can't say it's boring, right? You can say it's always exactly. interesting, which I feel it's like is important. Um, so of the, of the, the new album, Introducing Niels, do you have a, a specific track that you're particularly proud of? I mean, obviously you enjoy the whole project as a whole, but for example, if you were to perform it live, is there one particular track on that new record that you would look forward to really doing live that you like a lot? Hmm. That has like changed every time. Like I really like enjoy what was the, the latest track? I'd say like my favorite track on the album now is probably Fortune or Freedom. For some reason, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's something about how it, how it sounds. But I yeah. really like, I like them all. I mean, they're all cute enough. So. Uh, the, 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 each one stylus is kind of different. Like the Introducing Me is like the original one I usually do because it's like, pretty in your face and it, it, it spans out of context of the album pretty easily. Right. I think, I think Golden Girl can do that and I think that Barcade Date maybe can do that. I don't know. There's a few songs in there that like you can kind of rip out of the album or the context of the album and still have them make and, and do whatever but everything else is so storyline heavy that it's just like I mean that's like opening up a book to like the middle of the and try to figure out what's going on, but I don't right. know. But uh, yeah, I'd say like I don't know, Fortune of Freedom or the Introducing Eels track, like are the are just it's probably the funnest to do live. Cool. Um, the the next thing I wanted to ask. So obviously this album didn't come out that long ago. It I believe came out the end of last year. Is that correct? 
Correct, correct, yeah. Uh, um, do you, have you started working on another record, or are you just going to kind of focus on this and getting the movie shot and that kind of stuff, or have you already started working on your next project? Um, I, yeah, all I've been really focusing on is this, and I haven't even really done a good job of that. Like, I've had a lot of weird, like, life events that have taken place the last month or so that have sort of thrown me for a loop. So, I'm, I'm just, again, that's kind of why I've been in the wind in California, like, looking like an idiot. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Even if I had an idea what to do next, I don't think I would, like, be able to give it, like, 100% attention that it, it would need. Um, I have some ideas of, like, what I think I want to do, but, um, yeah, realistically, like, right now, Neil's is just a pretty big focus because I already feel like I failed it, and I, I don't want I don't like to feel that way. I like to feel at least I failed going down like a boss. Well, I, I think that you, you're you're passionate about this project, so for sure, I don't think it's dead in the water. I think that you keep focusing on it, and then there's a direction for it. And um, it makes sense with a record like this. I mean, the narrative is so strong, and it's about stuff that's, you know, not that unbelievable to happen, this idea that our, our internet would be so heavily policed that you'd be arrested just for downloading a TV show is not so far and depending on where the laws go in the next couple of years. So it's kind of right. this cautionary tale, which I think is really interesting because I haven't heard a ton of concept albums in, in Nerdcore. There are a few, you know, but the, the ones that stand out the most is yours, which just came out and then Schaefer's which came out a couple of years ago. They're, they're the only two that I know of off the top of my head that really have this very strong through line that's, you know, very much a story. And I think what's really great about yours is that it's kind of this, on the surface, it's this sci-fi epic, but at its core, it's actually something that's not too hard to believe, which which I think is a really cool way to wrap up a story like that. Oh, yeah, I feel the same way. Like I, I, I really like even just thinking of the idea and then part of the thing is like while I was writing it and then recording it, like there's a lot of things that really, I mean, I had already kind of touched on it as a plot point in the song or whatever or in the album. And then all of a sudden, like a week later or a month later, you'd see this news article would come out and it would be like verbatim, like exactly like what, what I just recorded in the song. So, so it was really, really creepy for a little while because <laughs> I was like, I was like predicting the future. Like it was, it was very, I don't know. And it would, it would be a real shame if I was right the whole time. But I mean, this, a lot of like the whole, like even the proposed merger, like hadn't, even broke yet i think when i had first like between the comcast and time warner yeah i don't even think that was even, that i don't think that has been like even public news like when that that was like kind of one of the biggest plot line things and then just thing after thing after thing yes yeah. so, i mean it's like it's really scary because it's not it, it's not the future i would like to see but it's kind of where we're headed so i mean yeah to deal with it so, um, have you always been into rap and hip hop? Have you been doing this for a long time, or is this something that you came to later on in life? Um, I've been in it since I was maybe sixteen or seventeen. Like as far as just a hobby, I wouldn't say. I I mean, even to this day, like I don't think I ever expected it to be something that was a professional, and you know that I had a, a chance to future in or something. It's still, it's still amazing to me that people can do, do crap about it. Cause like, I don't, I don't know. It, it totally, it hit me accidentally. But like, um, I, I mean, it's just like an art form and I, I've always loved it. But it's not, I don't know. If I had my brothers on the know, I would, I don't know. It's just weird. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how you, some things find you, you know, like you right. find something, something's on you. Um, would you say um, you have a particular specific set of influences for your style of rap? Or there are certain rappers, either nerdcore or not nerdcore, that have influenced your style? Um, my style, like, uh, cause even I, I know that I've evolved uh, over the years. I don't know if it's for better or for worse or whatever, but there's a lot of different, I mean, stylistically, like how my sound is you know, change over the years. I, I have no idea, like, really, like, I could be appropriating any number of people that I'm listening. The, the thing is, especially lately, like, I haven't really been listening to as much rap. 
as I used to or whatever. Like I still have a very um you got snapped out of an era. Like, you know, everybody kinda of my age or whatever would say like, you know, mid nineties rap was was the top of the game and Yeah. Uh, and you know, every music sucks beyond that, and so, so a lot of the stuff that I listen to is still very like I know it's the, the classic, the things that I used to listen to or whatever. But and their style never changes for some reason. Like the mine has, so I don't know if it's just what I'm how I'm being influenced by it. But really, it's just is there um... a. <laughs> Is there an interest to uh, do anything beyond nerdcore? You say you play, you said you play guitar. Um, are you have any interest in trying other genres of music, making a rock and roll band, something like that, or is you are you just kind of focused on this? Well, I mean, when I was in high school, like I was in a punk band. You know, I mean, I goof off or once. I mean, I do a lot of like. The, you know, I produce a lot too. Like, sure. but I'm I'm a terrible producer. Like, it, comparatively speaking, like, there's a lot of friends of mine that I have that are incredibly talented and world famous and special what they do, and I watch them work, and I, I I'm just completely in awe of their stuff. Like, so I mean, I know my limitations, but I just music's always been a big part of my life. Period, and I like dabbling in it and stuff. And, but again, I don't really have any misgivings. I'm not gonna be, you know, the next Paul McCartney or anything like that. So I just, just I just know my lane. I stay in it. At least to have fun is the biggest part, I guess. No, sure. I mean, you should be having fun doing art. Otherwise, it kind of doesn't really have as much meaning. And plus, we already have a Paul McCartney in the world too. We don't need another one. You know, you going your yeah, path I mean, as YT Cracker, yeah. I think, is is a good path to be on. I will, uh, I will, I will continue to be me. Hopefully, most of the body snatches or something like that. Um, so we were talking about hobbies, and you you mentioned Eve Online. Are you a big gamer? Do you play other games besides Eve, or is that kind of your one focus, the one game you like playing? Eve, I just picked up like uh, October, November, or something like that. Like mm-hmm. I just, I just, uh, but I mean, yeah, I'm always playing. I don't like playing games, different games. I don't know. Like, my daughter and I like to just beat games. But I, I don't even know what I've been playing lately. Like, she'd be maybe Beyond Two Souls together, but that's a little older. That's like a year older. But she wanted it for this Christmas. And then, uh, I don't know. Like, what? I just, yeah. I, like, my Steam library is filled with games that I have played, don't play. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> this is what it is. I've mainly been PC Master Race type stuff. Like, I, yeah. I'm as big of a console gamer. I, like, the last console games I've really been beating the shit out of were GTA V and uh, Last of Us. It was such a killer nice. game. But, um, aside from that, I mean, I don't know. Uh, console games, my daughter and stuff, she's into me. I'm just more of the PC gaming stuff. It seems like it's a common problem with Steam, and because I have Steam myself, it's like you see something on sale and you can get like eight games for a dollar, and you're like, oh, I'll buy those eight games for a dollar, and then you don't you go years without playing any of those eight games because you don't have the time to play them. Yeah, if, there's so many games I've never installed, like based off stuff I got off on Humble Bundles or oh like, sure, yes, and everything. So yeah, but the one thing everyone's been trying to get me to play is Hearthstone or or League. Either one, like it's just, uh, and I've not gotten, I've not bitten those, those bullets yet. But I used to, um, I, don't know, I like watching them on Twitch and stuff, just like, and watching people talk about things I have no idea about, and then like, getting <laughs> excited. Uh, and that's been my, uh, it's been my gaming experience lately. But yeah, I actually did an interview with BC a couple weeks back, and he was telling me, I didn't know he was a a League of Legends fan, so we blabbed about that for a while. And that's one of those games where at first you might hate it, but once it hooks you, you're going to play it all the time. It just devoured a a year or two of my life because I would just go online and play that every night with my friends. Um, And so those kind of games are dangerous. Once you kind of pull the cord on those, you get sucked in for a while. I got some friends that are like in the, it's like 
diamond is under Challenger. Like, there's the, the, the platinum, the diamond, and the, the Challenger. Is that the, is that the ladder, the way it works? Yeah. You know what I'm about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, and there's the ranked matches, and you can get into a certain league, which is based on your level and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I know some people that, like, are just right on that pro cusp, even. But it's, like, the same type of thing I was talking about the music, like, where, you know, there's just this... Once you kind of go down the rabbit hole, like you can totally become a programmer. But then, I mean, that's what's nuts is that's actually like a sport here. And, you know, in 2015, like people are making <laughs> like serious endorsement deals and money and stuff like that. It's being able to legalize it. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, that's, that just seems like so insane to me. It's not that, like that. I have friends that are like deliberately like don't, you know, they haven't totally like gone all the way into it. I mean, they're super, super good, super. I mean, they could totally, like, it's a jumble challenger, but it's a matter of just, like, how many, you know, do I have to double the amount of time I put into this game and, then, you know, solo king my way into stardom. <laughs> um, I want to bring it back now to what I was mentioning. My, my favorite song of yours is uh, The Link, which I got really into because, of course, I'm a diehard Zelda fan. Um, uh, was that song so that song obviously is inspired by Zelda the beat especially which has got this kind of ramped up almost race car style version of the Zelda theme um, where did the idea for a song about Zelda come from did it just come from your love of doing Zelda and creating this kind of beat or did you just kind of fall into it well and so off of um, the Nerd Rap Entertainment system, um, there was a song called The Legend right which uh sampled on um, the Legend of the Zelda as well, but like um honestly with the link what's so crazy about it is like there's this game called Kung Fu. Um and it just had this like uh dun, 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 mm-hmm. like whatever it be. And initially like when Decepticon and I were working on it, like that's what we had um we were using that with the beat with the drums. We had the drums set up the way we had them, and then we were we were using the kung fu um, song. And uh, then I don't know what it was, but then Decepticon was like, "Yo, let's, let's try it with this uh, this Zelda beat, and let's chop it up a little bit or whatever." So it was actually Decepticon's idea to even like move it into that Zelda direction. And then when he did it that way, we were like, this sounds so much better. Like, let's do it this way. So then, obviously, then that the beat informed the song title because, like, obviously, if it was Kung Fu, like, we wouldn't have called it the link. And, right. <laughs> and then it became, like... So, yeah, the entire, like, creative process when we were developing that beat, so it didn't actually start out that way. It started out as the Kung Fu beat and then, like, the Zelda. But the one throwback is at the very, very end of the Link song, it still has the kung fu like winning, uh, like when you win the game and yeah. when you and you get the broad. Mm-hmm. Um, that 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 like do, 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 that 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 song is actually still in there, even though it's from kung fu. We left it. <laughs> that's awesome. So that's that's behind the music on that. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I don't know if anyone ever knows that story, but. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, my audience is, I mean, at this point, I've interviewed a bunch of nerdy people, so they've got to be expecting some semblance of explanation and nerd references if they're listening to this podcast. So I think that's, we're safe. Excellent. Okay, good. That's good. <laughs> um, but that's cool. I mean, it's it's it's, it's interesting to hear, you know, I, I've spoke to a lot of musicians. It's always interesting to hear how the process works and that sometimes, even if you have a set way of doing things, sometimes momentary ideas and influences can c- completely change the course of a song that you're working on. Oh, totally. Yeah. I think that happens to me more than not. Like a lot of times I'm not very like, you know, it's just, it's like we're, what's weird about like making music and stuff is like sometimes like you're, if you try to force it, like it usually, you can usually tell that, you know, it's going to suck or whatever, like, uh, <laughs> or you can kind of make it work. Like if you get, if you're good enough, like you can kind of like, force inspiration or whatever and that's like why i've always hated you know having deadlines and having all those types of like weird restrictions and, and stuff uh like i would hate to be like have a label that's like you need to have three albums out every two years type thing yeah um otherwise you kind of shift to the yeah the whole process again it's supposed to be fun so you might as well have a good time while you're doing it sure totally um 
the the next thing I wanted to ask is so obviously you know when talking about the writing process and that you know you feel like it's always an evolutionary process. Have you ever come to like a song that you were working on or or a concept for a song that you're working on and you just can't make it work? Do you have any songs that are kind of like in the archive that maybe someday you hope you can change that you couldn't figure quite figure out? Um, to be honest, I mean there is actually like some there's a decent amount of like. I would say, like, yeah, things that, like, I mean, unrecorded recorded stuff that I never released or that I, like, briefly released for, like, two people to hear and then didn't, whatever. I mean, there's a, a swath of unreleased material. Most of it, though, is, like, um, I don't know, like, just stuff I was, like, goofing on out with or whatever. But uh, usually, like, it depends on how important a song is. To think. Like, for instance, like, with the introducing meals, like, I was, there's some problems I had, like, when I was, like, struggling with, like, writing it or, like, what I was supposed to be saying or what I should have been saying. And um, so, I mean, I would, like, work on another song and then come back to it. And usually that happens a lot. But, I mean, I wouldn't say there's any, you know, amazing gems sitting in my unreleased folder. <laughs> something like if I, if I turn up dead or something like that, then somebody can get a hold of them and remake them if they want to. But realistically, like... I wouldn't say that there's anything that anyone's missing out on that's been too amazing. Okay, well, I mean, but the, if anything, that that says that you're pretty focused when you're working on something, and that you tend to, to 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 finalize what you've got, which is not a bad skill. You know, being able to kind of arrange what you're working with and not not worry about that kind of stuff. Um, well, I think part part of the time you can't like. Uh, you can't um like if it's not coming that easily then it's probably not a good idea you know what i mean like it's, right. it's normally like the easier that something comes to you like the, the the better like the more fluid it's going to sound and so like yeah if you notice you're just like kind of clunking over things a little too much or whatever you're trying to shoehorn in you know different stuff i, I don't know that's that kind of people can, i think that translates into the song you know like people can hear that you, you don't give a shit so Right. And I, and then I, I think it's really important above all to be genuine. You know, I think the reason, another reason, uh, introducing Niels works really well is because the story, it, it's a very genuine narrative that you're presenting pretty, pretty frankly. You're not trying to, you know, there's some fun stuff and some interesting stuff in it, but you're not trying to pull the wool over people's eyes or be insincere. It's a, it's a really cool story that you've created, kind of created it with this heart and, and mind of, here's a thing, here's a great story, get into it. You know, you're not trying to yeah. shove it in people's face. Thank you. I appreciate the uh, vote of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think also there's, there's a distinct lack of smart music, you know, and smart music doesn't have to be complicated or overly intricate. It just has to, it has to make you think a little. And a lot of pop music and mainstream music now, it's just, here's, 10 songs that are loosely strung together by the fact that they're on the same album. Um, and I think that's a problem with modern music. Whereas, you know, I find in a lot of indie rap and indie rock, a lot of people have these higher concepts where they're like, well, what if we did a story? You know, what would that be like? And to put it in that framework, I think is really great, especially since it's not only just, it's, this one's less of a quote unquote nerdcore record because you're not rapping about Zelda or Kung Fu or whatever else or Earthbound. You're you're rapping about internet related stuff and then a hacker, but it's a story, you know, which I guess is nerdy in its own right, but it's in a different way. You're you're making people think in a different way too. Well, and that's like that's the biggest thing behind that though is that like you can't. I don't know. I was even talking like my super famous friends the other day about like just the, the whole the model of the uh the album is like so like people are not buying albums anymore the way that they, they used to and and it's kind of like you know, it's we're at a single based you know art form type shit the singles are the ones that are like getting out there and and uh you know getting the radio play and stuff yeah it's really it's really hurting like though because like that's the part of it is you know like things like dark side of the moon you know, it's an iconic Pink, Pink Floyd record, even though, like, that a lot of people say it changed in the face of music. There's a lot of, I think there's an audience out there that's looking for things like this. Yeah. But, again, finding them and, like, uh, you know, because it's part of, like, the Brave New World part. Is rather than, there's so much saturation of 
you know, everyone, if you go to any YouTube video, you're going to see a bunch of people, like, saying, like, yo, check out my mixtape, check out my mixtape, check out my mixtape. Like, the, 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 the entire, <laughs> I guess, landscape of music is saturated with all these, like, other spammers. And, you know, it's hard to find the audience, you know, precisely that they kind of listen to your, to your stuff and, and take it seriously. So much white noise. It's hard to say, like, you know, I could just be another guy that sucks. I mean, maybe I do suck. Who knows? But, like, I can just see another guy that's not, that's, that's not making sense of that I'm not in neutrality. And it's just like, Dr. Reed's like Dr. Seuss or something. So, there's a lot of chaff, you know, in, in art and, and stuff. And so as a result, like, I don't really fault the consumer because they've been given just crap for years. And, yeah. And stuff. So, again, it's all a matter of, if, if I can find these intelligent people and somehow touch them in their hearts and, I have them enjoy the music, and then I've done my job. <laughs> there you go. That's a that's a great way to be, I think, um, and a great way to look at it. But you're right. Yeah, the the the, the modern <laughs> consumer market is to blame, not the consumer themselves, but the garbage. The, the record companies that are putting out garbage are the ones to blame. But you can't help it. If you've got a certain hook, sometimes that's enough, and if they can print money with it, that's what they're going to go with. You know, the projects that are more intelligent but are great, but they require more work and more focus. Like an album like yours, you can't just hand it to somebody on the street and go, Oh, do you like, do you like rap here? Here, listen to this. You'll love it. Cause yeah. you don't know, you know, like I'm a me, I'm a nerd. I'm a sci-fi fan. I'm, uh, you know, I'm into stories and video games and all that stuff. So like your record appeals to me because it's on multiple levels. I mean, honestly, the thing that made me most curious about your record is it showed up in my feed with someone else listening to it on Spotify. And I saw the photo, the album cover that looks very almost Bioshock esque with the guy's hand and the windshield and all that stuff. Yeah. And I saw that. And I was like, Oh, that looks cool. What, what the fuck is this about? This is that guy who did the link. What, what the hell is this? Did he, you know, like at first I thought maybe it was a Bioshock record or something. And then when I clicked through and saw that it was like it, the titles alone gave it this kind of story, I was like, oh, well, I wonder what that is. So you're never sure what's going to grip people, but I guess you have to give them that shot. And, and sometimes the modern market doesn't do that. That's what it is, yeah. And, and, and that's one thing about like as a spammer guy, like I know like that there's certain things that just – it isn't – isn't an effective like that if you, have you ever walked down a busy city street there's always a guy like trying to make you listen to his mixtape or yeah uh you know and again like it's, it's just everybody's like spamming spamming spamming, spamming. But people like hate having like art thrown on them like people yeah. hate being like forced to listen to things forced to watch things it's almost like a commercial so like it's it's a different you have to take a different approach to music when you're like promoting it and, and, and stuff so like you said the way you came in through it it's kind of like it was more your decision than it was you know somebody making that decision for you uh no. which is like if you turn on the radio like they play what they're playing like you can't really you know i mean you can change the station but you know, like that's how you they, they get you that's how they get you they force you to different stuff yeah um well, i mean that's kind of always been the goal with even the show with crash chords autographs so we have another podcast that we do on my website called Crash Cor the Crash Course Podcast, which is a music review show we do weekly. And I, I you know, I, I love reviewing music and I feel like I'm, it's, we're the only people still listening on an album level and analyzing stuff on an album level. But that was very much, here's an album we reviewed it. If you like it, check it out. Or if you're interested in that album, check it out. Whereas the autographs, the series that I'm having you on is a purely interview show with artists. And my only goal with this is hoping that if, Say someone tunes into one of my first interviews, which was with Tribe One, and they, they're a huge Tribe One fan, and they love Nerdcore, they, and they follow my podcast since then, they'll get to you and see, oh, why is he Cracker? Oh, he's a Nerdcore rapper also. I wonder what he's done. And right. like, that's the goal, is to start a conversation, show that a lot of these artists, all these artists are people who love stuff and have a sense of humor and are good people, and, and oh, you should check out their music too, you know? It kind of makes right. it their choice. Like they listen into the conversation and go, Oh, he's really talking about this album a lot, this introducing meals. Maybe I should check it out, you know, because I think it's important then, to spread good art. Well, and that's like what I don't, that it's really cool. Like I've always liked about the, the nerdcore community or whatever. It's been very supportive, like all around as far as how I don't, like this, the generally like, even if it's not the same, cause there's in the, in the nerdcore, even some genre, like, uh, that 
there's only two of us, I think, as far as me and Dual Core. Yeah. Like, our, to do a lot of the hacker, like, the hacker-centric type stuff and, and do it with, like, do it really well. And, um, you know, because, like I said, most other Nerdcore, you know, Nerdcore, even within and of itself, has a lot of different fandoms, a lot of different disciplines, a lot of different songs and stuff like that. And so, I mean, even within the Nerdcore community, like, because I've been, I guess, one of the older artists, like, in the genre, uh, people give myself a, a listen differently, but, you know, there's... That even within Nerdcore, like, there's a lot of times where you wouldn't think that, like, this, like, the gamer nerd would get the hacker nerd stuff, or, like, the D&D nerd would get the, um, you know, Earthbound stuff, you know, whatever, like, yeah. so there's, like, a whole different, like, even within, like, the nerd culture, like, Star Trek versus Star Wars battles and all that stuff, like, there's an entire, like, there's, you know, dividing lines that's met, and, but for some reason, like, most nerd or artists, like, uh, and the fans of the genre too, like all we all come together, like on even though we're we're separate but equal type thing, like we all have like our our nerd dumbs and stuff, and so it allows people that aren't so nerdy about a subject to get into something that they may not know, know nothing about, and then you know the other way around, so it's good. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, what's cool is uh, there are a lot of artists that I've met purely through doing this show, and there are other artists that I've become very good friends with just through the internet and through other artists and or through other fans. And it's, it's one of my favorite communities. I mean, I became friends with Shaver the Dark Lord. And then from there, like I met everybody else in, in the genre or heard their music through him in the genre. And it's, and everyone's so supportive. Whenever you go to a show, it's like, Oh, I know that guy. I've seen him online. I know that guy too. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's a really cool it's thing. More, every, it's more of a culture and like friends and stuff like that than it is like this, like, yeah, fan, like artist fan relationship or something like everyone's usually like really like you know it's an inclusive group of people so it's good absolutely i agree um i want to thank you yt crack for taking the time to chat with me it's been a pleasure as a fan um and as a person who does interviews it's, it's a pleasure to always talk to people who are doing great art um if pleasure, people want to check out <laughs> if the uh, if people want to check out uh introducing meals where's the best place for them to pick it up um, on Bandcamp, uh, introducing, you know, uh, just whiteycracker.bandcamp.com or like if, uh, I said the YouTube, the videos that are currently uploaded are at youtube.com forward slash introducing meals. But I'm I, right now the introducing meals.com site, I have to redesign it here. Like I was in the next couple of days and get it more of a repository of what's exactly going on with the project because I don't know one of my problems here is it's been total like terrible information uh so just um yeah like uh those the those two places i guess just like look for it well great well i have a few other interviews to come up for this one so when it does come up i'll shoot you a text and if the website's good to go and there's any other information you want to supply me with i'll make sure that i have it it'll probably go up in about um it's a bi-weekly release show so it could be about a month before the ep the episode goes up but when it does yeah. i'll reach out and make sure i have all the info you need so we can properly promote everything that you're working on man Sounds fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great night, man. Have a safe trip. You too, man. Thanks a lot. All right. Bye. If you enjoyed these interviews, please subscribe to this and the Crash Chords podcast on iTunes, where you can also rate us and review us. You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Crash Chords Web, our Tumblr, and our YouTube channel. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post in the comment area below each post. And keep the discussion going, because remember, music is life, and life is good.